be with you. Let us pray together the school prayer. O oh God, who created us in your image and gave us minds and hearts and souls, send your blessing upon our school. May the flame of your spirit rest upon those who learn and those who teach, so that our minds may know the truth, our hearts be filled with love, and our souls be like pearls before your throne. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in reading Psalm 18 for young children. God is like a rock, strong and powerful. God is like a warm, dry place during a storm. God protects me from things that might hurt me. God is like a rock, strong and powerful. Hi, St. Matthews. It's week four of distance learning. If we were still at school, we'd be getting ready for the Stations of the Cross mime. This week is the most important week of Lent. It's Holy Week. It's the week when all over the world, Christians are getting ready for Easter by remembering the story of the last week of Jesus and how he died to show us how much God loves us and is always willing to forgive us. For the first time ever, most Christians won't be gathering in person to remember Christ's death and celebrate his resurrection. It's really strange to think about that. Instead, all over the world, we'll be celebrating Easter with social distance, attending online services, or praying and remembering at home. Back in August, when I selected scripture readings for the whole year, the topic I chose for Lent was sin and forgiveness. I plan to talk about what sin is and to look at all the teachings about forgiveness in the Bible. We didn't get very far because from the start of Lent, we were focused on the coronavirus. We did things like stop shaking hands after chapel and reminding each other to wash our hands more and stop touching our faces. We felt things changing then, but we didn't know how much. The story that Ella read for us today from the book of Jonah is a great one to inspire a conversation about sin. The people of Nineveh are sinning, and God wants Jonah to go there and tell them to stop, to tell them to be good. But he's afraid that this message will make him unpopular, and that people will get mad at him or try to hurt him. So he runs away and he gets swallowed by a whale. Finally, the whale spits him out, and Jonah obeys God and goes to Nineveh, and the people there listen to him, and the king orders them all to show God they are sorry. And then God shows mercy on them and doesn't punish them, because, as Jonah says to God, you are tender and kind. You are slow to get angry. You are full of love. 
You are a God who takes pity on people. You don't want to destroy them. Sin doesn't just mean breaking God's rules. It means living in a way that separates us from God and the way God wants humans to live. God's way for us to live is a way that benefits all people. An example of this is the way that by social distancing, we're taking care of each other, putting the common good first. When we aren't following God's ways, we are often doing things that are selfish to benefit ourselves or our own group rather than doing what's good for everyone. But the story of Jonah tells us that God will forgive us when we get, when we get back on the right path, setting aside our sinful selfishness. Bad things that happen in the world, like someone getting sick or a pandemic spreading throughout the world, aren't God's punishment because God loves us and doesn't want to hurt us. As we face the uncertainty of how long we'll be sheltering in place, whether we'll get to keep our favorite school traditions or our summer travel plans, whether it's our concern for the health of a loved one and the world, for the jobs and the economy, the story of Holy Week is really important. From this story, we learn that God loves us so much that God became a human to be with us and to teach us how to follow God's ways. And we learn that some people didn't want to hear about God's ways of love, forgiveness, and selflessness. Maybe they were afraid of the changes those messages might bring or the responsibility God's love puts on us to love others as we love ourselves. Those people arrested Jesus and had him killed. It's a very sad story with a lot of suffering in it. And we are living in a sad time with a lot of suffering in the world. Before Jesus died, he told his friends that he would always be with them. But still, they were sad and confused, and they didn't understand what he meant. They couldn't imagine life without him. In the same way, many of us are unsure of what our lives will be like in the coming months, and maybe longer. But they found, the disciples, that on the other side of Easter, Jesus was still with them. A lot had changed, but God's love remained constant and powerful. I want to invite you all to experience this important Holy Week story with me in two ways. The first one is to make a holy space in your house. An altar is a way of making space in your home to nurture your spirit. Having a sacred space at home is a way of remembering to follow God's ways. I know that many of us feel super busy at home right now, and some of us might instead feel really bored. But either way, we're missing the time that we carve out as a community during chapel to reflect on how we're living. Making a home altar is a way to carve out space and time to do that at home. At my house, we cleared off the sideboard where we normally keep our cookbooks. If you decide to make an altar, I hope you'll email me a photo. Maybe we can even share them on the school Facebook page as a way of staying connected. For our Hindu families and some others, you may already have an altar space, but please make one that's right for you and your family for example, our family has a picture of Jesus on our altar, but our Muslim families at St. Matthew's wouldn't put anything that could be like an idol in their sacred space. Everyone's sacred space will be different, and that's awesome. It's beautiful. This is our home altar that we made for Holy Week. We put objects on it that reminded us of our family members that aren't with us and our friends who are alone. Um, and we got some sacred objects. You might recognize some things from the religion room at school. Um, also, we have some things from our house like uh, a Buddha um, over here that is reminding me of the Buddha's compassion and peacefulness and acceptance of what's happening. And then we all wrote prayers on, our, on some little note cards for the world. We have things here that remind us of grandparents and um, this Mary Magdalene icon because she was with Jesus when he died and then she goes to the tomb to take care of him. And here's the mystery of Easter icon from when Jesus is crucified. And Hazel put this orange on the altar to be thankful for the fact that we have food 
our Aunt Jen gave us the hummingbird picture. Wesley put this robot on here because he's happy to have projects like his Kiwi Crate to keep him busy and learning while we're home. The second way we can experience Holy Week together as a St. Matthew's community is by reading the stories. Every day this week at dinner time, my family is going to read a story from the last week of Jesus and reflect on it, finishing up with Easter Sunday. If your family would like to do the same, I'll send out the readings and questions every day. The readings will be from the life of Jesus, and the questions will be spiritually inclusive, so people of all faiths can relate to them. If it's part of your family tradition to attend Easter services, I hope you'll do that online. Below this sermon and with my Easter readings, I'll share links for the Episcopal Church of St. Matthew's Easter service. Even though we aren't together in chapel, we can still walk together through the journey of Holy Week and learn more about how to follow God's ways. Prayers during the COVID-19 pandemic. As the world works to slow the spread of the novel coronavirus, we offer our prayers for all who suffer and face any kind of troubles. In response to each prayer, please say, Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, creator, and healer, look after all those affected by the coronavirus. Bring strength, healing, and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, our elders, and those especially at risk of severe illness, may they receive the care they need and know they are loved and valued. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For safety and protection for healthcare workers risking their own well-being for the sake of others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials and leaders, may they make wise decisions and to keep those they lead safe, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people quarantined and working or learning at home, may they experience joy, tranquility, and productivity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.